This brief video will be discussing the basic differences between a litigated divorce and a mediated divorce. Let's first talk a little bit about what would happen in a litigated divorce. Typically, parties would each um, engage uh, an attorney. If one person has an attorney, that attorney cannot represent both parties. So the other person is compelled to have an attorney as well so that they have representation. Should be noted that you are not required by law to have an attorney. However, if one party does have an attorney, it's strongly advised that the other party has an attorney as well. The attorneys then follow uh, some civil rules of procedure that is outlined by the various states that they practice in. And certain documents are filed and certain documents are presented to the other parties. The term being served means that you will receive some documents usually handed to you by a constable that, the, that your uh, soon-to-be ex-spouse's attorney has prepared. Those documents are going to look very scary. They have a specific format that anybody that's been in a lawsuit before would recognize. They have uh, headers and footers on them and there's a certain lines and, and the way that the paragraphs are um, formatted on it. In and of itself, instantly you know that you are in the middle of some kind of legal action. That in and of itself can create some anxiety which in a divorce situation, there's already enough anxiety. After you are served those documents, then your attorney is compelled to answer and thus begins the litigation process. An answer is filed with the courts and that is an answer to the petition that was filed and served on you. The petition consists of what your ex-spouse is asking for and that will include everything from how the debts and assets will be split, the financial arrangements uh, for each of the parties, how the children will be handled, the decision making uh, parts of, of the agreement for the children, the financial needs of the children, um, the parenting time arrangement for the children and it is asking the judge, petitioning the courts for that agreement and then your attorney will file an answer. About 18 months later, if you're lucky, there will come a time where a judge will make a decision. In that 18 month period, and that's just an average period of time for a divorced couple that has children. In that period of time, there will be several other hearings and meetings that will take place. Um, hearings with the judge to determine temporary support how the parties are going to financially work things out during the litigation process. There will be temporary, uh, a temporary custody arrangement, how the kids will be dealt with during that 18 month divorce process. There's going to be some depositions taken and a discovery process. A deposition is where you are required to answer questions that the other party's attorney gets to ask about anything that they want and you, your attorney will be able to ask their attorney questions as well. Typically these questions are about um, financial matters. If there is going to be conflict regarding the children, the judge will often order what's called a custody evaluation. That usually is six of those 18 months and that's where a professional is going to uh, somebody with a license in child psychology will come in and evaluate the children by interviewing people that the children know, observing the children, and ultimately making a recommendation to the judge as to uh, what the, the, the parenting and custody uh, outcome should be. 99% of the time, a judge is going to follow whatever the custody evaluator um, states. There will be... Um, other hearings that will take place um, sometimes to determine jurisdiction and things like that. And finally, there will be a, a final hearing called a trial. It's important to note that only 2% of the cases ever go to a trial. The number one reason for that is the cost. The average cost of a litigated divorce when there's a custody evaluation is going to be around $30,000 each. and. Um, and like I said, the average time frame is about 18 months. There are cases that will go significantly longer and cost significantly more. That's just an average. A mediated case 
in comparison, very different. If the parties can meet with a mediator at the very beginning, the mediator's job is to educate each of them and ensure that each of them have an opportunity to participate in a process that is neutral. The mediator is a, is a third party, unbiased person that is trained in family law and also trained in conflict resolution. The mediator's job is to provide a setting either in a room or oftentimes in a uh, video conference where each party gets to vocalize what their version of fairness is on the various topics. Prior to that mediation, the mediator will prepare each person and make sure that they're adequately educated about all of their options. The mediator's job is not to advise them, but to educate them and make sure they understand all the information they need to so that they can make decisions. Ultimately, if the couple is able to reach an agreement in a mediation, and a typical mediation when there's children involved could last approximately four hours, a very different set of documents is filed with the courts. Up until that time, no documents have been filed. The parties meet together with the mediator, craft the agreement, the mediator gives them a rough draft to review. After they've approved that rough draft, a document called the stipulation is prepared. That document then is taken and given to the, the judge to review. If the judge approves that stipulation, then a second document is prepared called a divorce decree, which the judge signs. That process can be done in as little as 30 days and at a fraction of the cost of a litigated divorce. Even the most difficult mediated divorces when there's children and debts and assets very rarely cost more than $5,000 total or $2,500 each. The amount of time that is saved and the amount of money is saved is, is compelling and, and each party should consider that. In many states, you're required to go to a mediator before you can engage the courts in any way. If you live in one of those states, be glad for that law. If you don't, talk to your spouse about at least exploring the idea of mediation. You'll find that the success rate with good mediators is usually over 90%.